Right. It, it sounds like we've kind of entered a hidden optional stage of refold over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, it, of course, it's always, like I said, weird to kind of talk about because you can't, there, there's always that that kind of like elephant in the room of like, well, you can't recommend dating someone like too directly, like dating someone who's your target language because, you know, right. dating isn't, isn't a transactional thing, you know, so you can't just, right. like, can't just go up to someone and be like, hey, you're, you're Japanese, so like, let's date, but. But I mean, you know, what if you have a matching system in refold, like, <laughs> depending on what you're learning, it matches you. I mean, wait, does that is that not already exist? Because I feel like that that got uh, some like, I mean, well, it's hello talk. I mean, yeah, yeah. Of. I mean, of course, yeah, of course, all actual like um, apps to find language partners are, are like secretly dating apps. But someone should if, if it doesn't exist, someone should make someone should definitely make an actual like uh, dating, yeah. like target language, like dating app. But I mean, like realistically, like in my case, right, I wasn't going out to try to find a Japanese girlfriend. I was going out to practice Japanese. And when you and by practicing Japanese, I was going to places where Japanese people are. When you go to places Japanese people are, you meet Japanese people. And so it it just kind of happens. So, I mean, it's a pretty natural thing in the, you know, ultimately, if you're studying the language, you're going to naturally put yourself in situations with native speakers. So then, you know, it can it can happen. But but yeah, it's all it's also really cool because I don't. Like this is actually something I've heard from my other friend who's like married to a, a Japanese woman, and I haven't I haven't really I don't really experience it with my girlfriend, but my friend he gets corrected like all the time like hardcore by his girlfriend, and I and he says the reason why is that you know his girlfriend when when or his wife sorry I should say like his wife is like well I married you so when I introduce you to my friends or my family I want you to sound as good at Japanese as possible. Because if you're if you suck at Japanese, I'm going to be embarrassed like for you, right? Because we're it's almost like when you marry someone, you know, your identities become kind of like intertwined. You know, you're kind of like a you're like a now a new unit right. uh, of like you know existence. So, right, and that's like, I guess if you, I mean, obviously this doesn't happen to a lot of people who marry Japanese women because most people who marry Japanese women never learn Japanese. But I mean, I guess if you if you got the right type of person and maybe you're like you start off good enough where they actually like view you as a Japanese speaker. Cause maybe if if you just like you don't speak Japanese at all, they're like, well, you don't even you're not a Japanese speaker, so you know it doesn't matter. But if you're good enough to be considered a Japanese speaker, then it's kind of like, oh well, I want you to be as good as possible so that you don't sound dumb and embarrass me, basically, right? So that right. I mean would sounds like really on a language learning level, right? Like that's the most powerful thing you can happen if you have a native speaker who is like personally invested in you sounding as good as possible. That's you know. Pretty solid. Also scary though. So, oh, watch out! <laughs> a lot but... of pressure. Because <laughs> I've actually hung out with them before, and she'll correct me too, and it honestly uh, gets me down because there's uh, so many corrections. So I also know it's like a double-edged sword, and uh, you don't, you know, be careful what you wish for. But 